Hello, we are discussing about GATE 1992 ECE paper and the topic we are discussing is electronic devices. This is fourth one more question came in GATE 1992. In a transistor having finite beta, the forward bias across the base emitter junction is kept constant and the reverse bias across the collector bias junction is increased. Neglecting the leakage across the collector bias junction and the depletion region generating current then the base current will increase decrease or remains constant the correct option for this one is decreases base current decreases when emitter base junction is kept constant and as you are increasing reverse bias across the collector bias junction this question is related to early effect the other name for this one is nothing but base width modulation. Early effect or base width modulation is defined as variation of effective base width as a function of reverse bias voltage VCB. Early effect is defined as variation of effective base width. It is not original base width. Effective base width as a function of reverse bias voltage VCB. VCB is nothing but voltage across collector bias junction that is reverse voltage. We see the details of early effect now. How can we say that one effective base width is reduces as VCB increases? That we will see. So first of all we are going with a BJT under open circuit. BJT is a three terminal device which consisting of emitter, base and collector. So if no voltages are going to be applied across the terminals that is under open circuit. Emitter, base, collector every BJT consisting of two PN junctions one is emitter base junction the other is collector base junction so we can call it as JE and JC JE is emitter base PN junction JC is nothing but collector base PN junction under open circuit both junctions are going to be look similar and both will be having the built-in potential barrier height as V0 so under open circuit we can draw the diagram like this this part is emitter, this is collector side and it is base. We are interested in the base, that's why base has given taken the large width. So this is JE and JC, they are under open circuit. And this is what emitter base junction and collector base junction, we have neglected the width of potential barrier across emitter base junction and collector base junction under open circuit. So that we have drawn the vertical line directly. We have not shown the width of depletion region under open circuit. So this is the base portion where the electrons are going to be present from this end to this end. That is nothing but from emitter base junction to collector base junction electrons will be present for the PNP transistor. For PNP base is of N type so that electrons will be present. If it is NPN holes will be present. That is majority carriers for base are going to be present from JE to JC. So this is what width of base where the majority charge carriers are present. So that is indicated with WB. Under open circuit this is the width. It is also called as metallurgical base width. That is at the time of fabrication what is the width of base. Metallurgical base width. Now if we apply active region for the BJT active region means emitter base junction must be forward bias collector base junction must be reverse bias so if you keep BJT in active region at that time what happens to the both junctions so first we will apply forward bias to the emitter base junction by connecting an voltage we are assuming PNP transistor so we are applying VEB some positive voltage across emitter base junction so that this emitter base junction is getting forward bias JE is forward bias. We know that one under forward bias potential barrier reduces. That is width of potential barrier reduces as well as height of potential barrier reduces. Already we have neglected the width of potential barrier under open circuits. So again the width is going to be still reduces further reduces under forward bias. So we no need to show the width of potential barrier for forward bias. What we can show is nothing but only the height of potential barrier. Previously it was V0, now it is reducing by V0. 
VEB. So the diagram is going to be looks like this one. Height of potential bar is going to be reduced by VEB. VEB is the applied forward voltage. So the height of potential barrier effectively reduced towards V0 minus VEB. This is the height of potential barrier under forward bias. So this red line implies this is reduced potential barrier height. Whereas this blue line is nothing but under open circuit the height of potential barrier which is V0. Okay, we are not applying anything towards the collector base side so that it has not changed. So now apply reverse bias to the collector base junction. Reverse bias to collector base junction is nothing but collector is of P type. So we must apply some negative voltage. So we are applying VCB in this case. Now this external voltage VCB is making collector bias junction reverse bias. And we know that one under reverse bias potential barrier increases. That is width of potential barrier as well as height of potential barrier both will increase height as well as width of potential barrier. Now the width of potential barrier increasing so this we must show in the diagram because only we have neglected the width under open circuit but now it is increasing so that increase we must show under reverse bias. So the diagram is going to be looks like this whenever the collector bias junction is getting reverse biased. So this is blue line indicates under open circuit height of potential barrier which is V0. Now we are applying reverse voltage. So height of potential barrier increases by that much. So VCB is the reverse voltage, applied reverse voltage because of that one. Height of potential barrier under reverse bias is V0 plus VCB. This is effective height of potential barrier under reverse bias. JC is getting reverse bias and the height of this one. And next, width of depletion region under reverse bias is also increases. And width of depletion region penetrates more into lightly doped region than heavily doped region. If you compare base and collector, base is lightly doped than collector. So width of potential barrier penetrates more into base side than collector side. So that on collector side we have not shown anything because collector is heavily doped the change in depletion layer width is very very small that we neglected. But base is lightly doped so width of potential barrier penetrates more into base side so this is what this shaded portion is nothing but width of potential barrier which is indicating with W. So and we know that one depletion region consisting of immobile ions it doesn't contain any mobile charge carriers. Now in case of PNP the basis of N type majority carriers are electrons which are present from emitter base junction and it is going to be end up by this till depletion region only. So this is the width where the majority carriers are going to be effectively present because in depletion region no majority carrier will be present. So this we are calling it as effective base width effective base width where effectively the majority carriers are available. So previously under open circuit majority carriers are available from the emitter base junction towards collector base junction but under active region because of reverse bias the depletion width is penetrated into base side so effective base width is going to be reduces. We can call WB dash is nothing but WB minus W. So WB dash is nothing but effective base width, W is nothing but width of depletion region at reverse bias collector bias junction. So if you increase more and more collector bias voltage that is if you increase more reverse bias at that time height will be increases by a large amount and width is also increases depletion region width is also increased by a large amount. So by that time WB dash is still reduces. Whenever WB dash is going to be reduces at that time the number of recombinations in base reduces that makes base current to reduce so that now the base current is going to be a function of applied reverse voltage across collector base junction as more and more collector base voltage is going to be applied that is more reverse bias you apply at that time effective base width is going to reduces by a large amount so that base current is going to reduces by a large amount 
So we can define early effect is defined as variation of effective base width as a function of reverse bias collector base voltage. So the correct option for this one here for the transistor with finite beta forward bias across base emitter junction is kept constant. Reverse bias across the collector bias junction is increasing. As you apply reverse bias voltage across collector bias junction WB dash reduces so that IB reduces the base current will decrease so the right answer is decreases thank you